Welcome to this quick start tutorial for Thrive Leads. After watching this video, you will know how to use Thrive Leads and you will be able to create your first opt-in form on your website. Now let's go to the Thrive dashboard and select Thrive Leads. The very first time you will be prompted to add your license key and once you did that, we will be able to start creating opt-in forms. Let me show you how the plugin works by adding an opt-in form that many of you will want to add to your website and that is a lightbox pop-up. You can see that I have no opt-in form set up yet. So in lead groups, we're gonna add a new lead group. Click on the add new button. From here, we give it a name. This is for internal use only. Now you want to choose a type of opt-in form. So here, this would be a lightbox. Let's select the light box. And as you can see for the moment, this will not be shown because it is not shown on desktop, not shown on mobile. And the first step is to add a new form. You can also see that here you have an exclamation point because for the moment, the targeting options are not set up. We'll get back to this right after we made our form. So let's click on add form create a form. And so here you can see that you have to give another name. This will be very useful once you start A-B testing. So let's just call this variation one. From here, you can see that we have different options. We have trigger, display, frequency, and animation. The trigger setting defines when the opt-in form will be shown. So as you can see, it displays immediately on page load, but if you click on it, you can change it and you can choose to show it after a certain period of time, or maybe after scrolling down to a certain part of the content or a certain percentage down to the content. So maybe only when people go 50% down on your page, then you want to trigger the light box. This is up to you. And this is definitely something that you can test, but our test has shown that you get better results when you show on page load. So let's just leave this. Now the display frequency is actually how often this will be shown to people who don't subscribe. So if you set this to zero, it means that every time a new page loads, it will show the opt-in form. So this is not something that you want. This is super annoying. If you set this to seven, it means that people will only see the opt-in form if there are seven dates in between the first time they trigger it and the next time they come back to your website. So this allows you that if somebody browses around and sees multiple blog posts, they won't see the opt-in form multiple times if they click away. So I think seven is pretty good. So we can just leave this and then you can also change the animation. So this is how the opt-in form will come into viewport. You can see here that you have different options. You can just have fun with this and you can put it to rotational, for example. This is completely up to you. This is also something that you can test later on. So just pick the one you like and click on save. Now you can click on the edit design and we're going to start editing our light box. From here, you can pick a template you like. And the thing is, let's try to pick a template that resembles the most as what you're looking for. So if you already have an image of your ebook, you can pick one of the templates that have like an ebook image. If you don't, then maybe just pick one that has text so that you make sure that it actually looks good when you load the template. So from here, let's just pick this one and choose it as template. And now you can start editing everything on this page. Simply click on it and start typing. So you can put your new title here and you can also drag elements around so that you can actually make it look a bit differently and like change images, make them smaller. And the most important thing is if you want to change this lead generation element, so you actually click on it and you click here on the edit form elements. And then from here, you will be able to change, for example, the text on the download button. This will be very important because you want to have a clear call to action. You can also change like the colors of this so you can really make it match your brand. So if you click on the button again, then you can here simply change the, the linear gradient. So as you can see here, we have like this green gradient and you could make it maybe blue because you well, if your website is blue, right? So let's apply this. And if you want to change what happens on hover effect, you will have to go to the state here. You can see state default. And if you go to hover, then you will be able to change what happens on hover effect. So maybe we can just turn the hover around. So let's use the same tints of blue, but it's just in the other way around now. So let's exit the state and then you'll see what happens. So now on hover, you can see that it switches this gradient effect around, which is 
that looks pretty good. On this button element, you can see that we have like this green shadow. So I'm also going to change this when I go to shadow here, you can see we have like this drop shadow and rather than making it green, I will make it my blue color so that it actually matches. And I'll do the same in hover. Oh, that also, that already changed. So perfect. Let's save this now. So we can first exit this hover state and then exit this lead generation element. Now, when you click on the lead generation element again, you can see here that you can connect the form to service. And this is what you will have to do to connect this to your email service. It's also here that you will be able to ask only for an email and not for a name, for example. So you'll be able to delete one of the input forms. So let's connect to a service. If you have no API connections that are already connected here, you can add a new API connection. Now, as you can see, I already set up some connections, so I can just click on one of the elements and then choose my mailing list and maybe add some tags to this element. So I can just continue here. And now, as you can see here in the form fields, I can change the text that is shown to my subscribers and I can also delete one of the elements. So if I don't want to ask for the name, I can simply delete this field or I can add it back in again if I want it again. Now, let's say that instead of saying just email, we want to, to have this say like your best email. And like I said, we don't want to ask for a first name, for example. Next. The last thing that you'll be able to do when you connect your opt-in form is that you actually can decide what happens after somebody opts in in this form. So you'll be able to redirect to a custom URL. So this means that you can redirect to a thank you page, for example. You can simply reload the page. This is not necessarily something that I think you should be doing because you should always tell people the action that they took actually took place. So at least you can show a success notification. This means that there will be a little message on top of the screen saying thank you. Or you can ask to switch states. Now, what does this mean? This means that on the same page where the light box shows up, you will just show something differently in the same light box. So you can just have in the light box say something like thank you, or you could even have your download link in there. Now, this is something that's more advanced. So usually you will just redirect to a thank you page or maybe a confirmation page. And this means that you will select the redirect to custom URL. And then here you can add your URL. Now that you set everything up, there's one last thing that we have to do, and that is decide our targeting options. Let's go back to our Thrive Leads dashboard. And here you can see we still have our red exclamation point and the opt-in form is not displayed for the moment. So let's go into the settings, the display settings, and you can see that you can pick where you want to show this form. In our case, we want this to be our catch-all opt-in offer. So we would show this on all pages and all blog posts. So let's pick this all pages, all posts. But as you can see, you can be very specific with where you want opt-in forms to show, but we will go more into detail in the next tutorial. So let's save and close. And now one last thing to make sure that this opt-in form shows is let's switch these to on. So if you want to show in this light box on desktop, you can do so. And if you want to show it on mobile, you can do so too. Now that's one thing that I forgot to show you. So let's go back into our editing, into our editing of our form. When you finish editing your light box, you can actually check how this would look like on different screen sizes. So in this case, you go to your responsive view and from here, let's click on tablet. And as you can see on tablet, this still looks pretty good. So we don't have to change anything. And then you can go to mobile too. And now here on mobile, well, while it's, it looks good. Like, I mean, it is a responsive template. So it does look good, but it does take up a lot of the screen, right? So you can't really see the button and maybe like this title is a bit big. So now what you could do is you could decide that, for example, this image is not really useful on mobile. And then you can go here into your responsive menu and you could just hide this element completely on mobile. Now, when somebody arrives on mobile, as you can see, they will have immediately the whole opt-in form that is shown. And maybe we can still like change this font, make it a little smaller. 
well, still has to be readable, of course. And then like maybe change the spacing a little bit. So if we click on this, we can maybe like make this a little closer to each other so that it becomes more compact, right? So now this opt-in form looks better on mobile and it will actually be okay to show it. So let's save this now. Of course, another possibility would be to say that you just don't show this light box on mobile at all. You could show another type of opt-in form on mobile. So that's exactly why this display switches are here. So you could, for example, decide to have a ribbon that shows on mobile and a light box that shows on desktop. And that can be something very smart. So maybe actually let's, let's set that up now. Let's decide not to have our light box show on, on mobile. But let's make a ribbon because that's one of the smallest opt-in forms that you'll be able to have. And so this one you will switch on only on mobile, but we first have to add a new form. So again, let's call this variation one, create the form. And on the top, that's okay. We can show it all the time. It doesn't bother us. And immediately on page load, all of this makes sense for a ribbon. Let's select a template from here. And in this case, I actually want to, to use a two-step template. So one of the multi-step templates, and I'll show you why, because on mobile, this makes more sense. Let's choose this one. And now, as you can see, we have like this, this title and then a button. And on mobile, this would look something like this. So just again, a title and a button. And this looks better than having the full opt-in form, right? Because it doesn't cover the whole content. Let's go back to, mob to our desktop editing, that's easier. And now only when somebody clicks on the button, they would see an opt-in form. And that's the best way to make a compact form on mobile, because then people will only see an opt-in form when they click on this button. And you can see here in the state, we have actually have a light box. When you click on this, you can edit the light box that is connected to this ribbon. Let's see what this light box looks on mobile. The image will not show on mobile, which makes sense. And we have a button that's big enough to click on with the thumbs, which is also very important. So let's go back to our default state. So our ribbon in the preview mode, you can see that when we click on this button, it will show this light box. And that's exactly what will happen now on mobile. Now in our Thrive Leads dashboard, we will be able to decide that the light box is shown on desktop and that the ribbon is shown on a mobile device. Now this way you are sure to show all your desktop users a light box and all your mobile users will see this ribbon opt-in form. In Drive Leads, we made it extremely easy to set up an A-B test. And let me show you how it's done. So first of all, let's go to one of our lead groups. Let's take the two-day list building challenge and we will set up an A-B test for our light box because that's the one that most people will see and that will have the biggest impact if we can get a higher conversion rate on this one. So let's simply go to the edit button and from here, you can see that we can either add a new form or we can clone the existing one. Now, when you want to change one small thing on the opt-in form, I suggest you choose the clone option. So if you just want to test something like a color button or maybe a different title, but you don't want to change the images or maybe the image, but you don't want to change the title and the button color or whatever, then you can clone your opt-in form. But if you want to change everything about the opt-in form, so maybe you want to use another template, then you can use the add new form. Now let's just simply clone it so that I can show you what this means. From here, we will edit the second form. So as you can see, no traffic is sent, so you can simply set everything up and don't worry about what's happening on your site. So let's go to edit design. And as you can see here, we have the exact same opt-in form as the first version. 
One thing that you should know about A-B tests is that it can be very difficult to get a statistically significant result if you're just testing something small, like maybe download now instead of download on, on your button. That's probably not a good test to run unless you have like hundreds of thousands of people visiting your website. I suggest you start with a much bigger change than that. And one thing that I can tell you to test and that we tested and with great success is actually test a one-step opt-in form against a two-step opt-in form or a multi-step opt-in form. Let me show you. So go to your page setup. From here you can pick a new template. Go to the multi-step templates and let's pick this first one. Now from here you can see that there is no immediate opt-in form on this opt-in form. You have two buttons. Yes, let's make it happen and no, I don't like traffic. And only when you click on the yes button, you will actually go to an opt-in form. And when you click on the no button, the opt-in form will be closed. Here, first of all, of course, you can change your text again to say whatever you want. And the same thing with like the buttons, yes, yes, let's do this. So from here now you might be wondering how you can connect your actual opt-in form. And you remember the ribbon where you had a button that actually opened the light box? Well here it's the same idea. When you click on this button it will open a new state of this light box. So this is a preview of our opt-in form and when you click yes you will see the opt-in form appear. So this is a micro commitment before actually signing up. The way to edit this type of multi-state opt-in forms is to look here in the plus button. You can see that you have a default state and a state 1. And it is in state 1 where you will find your opt-in form. You can see this is the state 1 of our form. And here now we can click on the opt-in form and we can connect it with our service. And if we go back to the default state and we click on the button, now, when you click on one of the buttons and you go to the animations and actions menu right here, you will see that on click, this will close the form for the no button and for the yes button on click, it will switch states. So this is something that you can actually do on any opt-in form you make yourself. But if you use one of the multi-step templates, it's already done for you. So this is definitely something that you can test, a one-step opt-in form against a two-step opt-in form. And then you will see which one gets the best conversions. Now that we have this form set up, let's go back to our Thrive Leads dashboard and we can now click on the Start A-B Test button. From here, you will give a title to your A-B test and you can have automatic winner settings. So this is something if you don't want to bother about looking at your opt-in forms again, you can actually just enable the automatic winner settings and you can here see if you have a minimum 100 conversions, so that means 100 people who signed up for your list, it will minimum take two weeks. So even if you get to 100 conversions within two weeks, the experiment will keep on running and the chances to be the original. So that is like the statistically significance has to be higher than 95%. If you leave this as it is, you can be sure that Thrive Leads will pick the best opt-in form for you and you don't even have to look at your opt-in forms anymore. This is a perfect solution if you don't want to bother with the A-B tests anymore, but if you still want to optimize your website. And then you hit the start test. From now on, Thrive Leads will automatically show half of your visitors the first opt-in form and half of your visitors the second opt-in form. And over time, you will be able to see which opt-in form converts best and you will be able to optimize your conversion rates this way very easily. Now you can A-B test lightboxes against another design of lightboxes, but you can actually do something that's even more powerful in Thrive Leads and that is testing different types of opt-in forms against each other. So when you go into a lead group that has multiple elements, such as here a lightbox and a scroll mat, you will be able to test form types against each other. So this will allow you to see which one is most efficient. Once you click on this button, you can just select them and then give them a title and start the test. Here too, you can pick for the automatic winner settings and this means that you will never have to think about this again and that you get your conversion rates up on autopilot. 
Now, this was a quick overview of what you can do with Thrive Leads and how it works. So let's get started and you can find out more about the advanced features later on.